Good day, viewers. We're here today again for the Bible study, and we know that it's a blessing time for you. No wonder you're there. And the Lord will not disappoint you today because you're going to receive from His throne the rich word through His Bible. Uh, today we'll be studying uh, Study 49, and being the second Sunday in Advent, the theme is still the Lord God and the reign of peace. We have been discussing the Lord God and the reign of peace all along, and the sub theme is the eternal reign with God for. Uh, today's topic is sacrificial livelihood. And our text will be seen in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. From uh, today's study, we aim to, one, teach Christian giving as part of our duties for eternal kingdom. And two, to expatiate on the consequences of an uncharitable attitude in Christendom. Uh, it's always a blessing time. And we know today the Lord has blessed us with wonderful men of God in the house. Uh, to my right is our father, the right reverend Dr. Johnson Onoha, the bishop of Arochuku Ohafia Diocese. He's here to bless us. Daddy, you're welcome. God bless you. And on my left is uh, Father Two in the house, the Reverend Canon Abegunde. He's here, a priest of the Abuja Diocese. Daddy, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to be us. Ah, okay. Daddy, you will help us with the, the text. We want to hear what the Lord is speaking to us from Luke chapter 10, from verse 25 to 37. Luke chapter 12. From verse 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring an, on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go, and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. That means for you to qualify to be a neighbor as the Lord is sending us, you must have some acts, some doing words, some actions. Uh, so the introduction, sacrificial livelihood is a life that caters for the needy and the indigents. Our text today shows the importance of caring for the needy to God and the eternal grave consequences of failure to do so. The Bible clearly states that we will always have the needy and the poor around us. Our caring for them is highly essential for our eternal reign 
with Christ. And so he, the Bible, the introduction requests that we read Matthew chapter 25 from verse 34 to 36. Matthew 25, 34 to 36. Okay. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it's very clear. The Lord is saying that all those acts of mercy, all those acts of charity that we are doing qualifies us to be the neighbors. So it is what we do that qualifies us to be seen as having loved our neighbors. It's not only for us to stay and receive. I believe that as we go through the study guide, uh, the Lord will use our guests and every one of us to minister unto everyone. Uh, so we'll go to study guide number one. Uh, Daddy, can you reflect on the text of today and analyze sacrificial livelihood? Thank you very much. Um, in trying to analyze this sacrificial livelihood, I want to use something that happened some years ago mm. as um, an example of sacrificial livelihood. I know people can do better than that. Okay. But uh, a few years ago, as a bishop, um, I met this young lady with a baby, and that baby was really malnourished. Mm. A baby of two years old, she was, the baby was malnourished, a baby boy. And I asked her why the baby was like that. And she said that she didn't have money, nobody to help her. And I said, okay, I will take you and your baby to the hospital. Okay. So I called up a doctor and I took them to the hospital. On getting to the hospital, it was discovered that the baby had no blood. Hmm. And the doctor said that if we had wasted more time, more time the baby the would baby. have, yes. And I said, what do we do? I said, we should donate blood, that we, the, the baby needs blood. And I said, take my blood. Hmm. So they had to test and they found out that I could donate blood to the baby. Hmm. And I yeah. donated that blood and I made sure that everything about the hospital bill was taken care of. That baby now is a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> was she operational? Uh, at that time, no. At that time, no. At that no. time, she was yes, operational? Yes, How did at you that come time. In contact with I, I was just passing by and I saw her. I saw her crying with the baby. He was carrying, she, was, she was just helpless and she was crying. A very young girl. That, that touched me yes. so much. You know, because it's so, just a practical demonstration of what we are saying. This is not somebody uh, in the roster of people the church has budgeted to work on. No, no. It just happened chance. And, but I believe as Christians, the Lord, how did you know your blood will match and all those things? So it's a miracle. It's I a think. miracle. <laughs> I can say it's a miracle. And it was divine intervention. Mm. I believe so. It was divine intervention. Mm. Actually, that was not the first time I was seeing the lady okay. with the baby. I okay. had seen the lady and the baby. They passed. They, there's a place they go to for this. They are traditional. They were just feeding the child with all these tradition, traditional herbs. And okay. those things were even okay. taking Eating, the blood. Yeah. The more. So when I on on questioning her, she gave me information about that. I said, no, don't continue with this traditional way. I will take you to the hospital. And she said she doesn't have money. I said, don't worry. Mm. Money should not be the issue. Life is more important than whatever you think. So when we are talking about sacrificial livelihood, it has to do with sacrificing. If it means your resources, your 
life, even your life. Even when there's no compulsion. Yes. Nobody is forcing you to yeah. do it, but you are doing it sacrificially to help someone who ordinarily cannot help himself or herself. Hmm. And another thing that touched me, I'm coming to you, Daddy. Yeah. But another thing that touched me, he said, when I asked, was she a parishioner? Okay. He said at that time, no. no. Okay, if you had gone to say, uh, I, I will help you if you become my uh, my church member. It will not be like it was for that purpose. But yeah. divine mm -hmm. intervention, doing it. And if she had decided to go away on, to her own wherever or not come to Christ, it wasn't the point. But now I perceive that she has been won for Christ. Yes, she she's not she's no longer in Arochuku uh, because uh, that's where I met her. Oh, she, she in fact she is married and uh, uh, yeah, she has gone to her husband. Hallelujah. Yeah. Daddy, you want to. Uh, but yes, um, sacrificial uh, livelihood, me, I see it as synonymous to sacrificial giving. Uh, and uh, giving has never always been convenient, mm. except if you are giving what does not <laughs> want it. Uh, so if you look at today's um, um, text, you discover that it is always very easy uh, when there is no love to rationalize why mm. we are not giving. Mm. Uh, it is always. And um, our neighbor, just like you have rightly pointed out, is somebody we are in a position to assist. The, the, the creed or native of where uh, doesn't come in. Uh, so these are the things. And um, if you look at that example of our Lord Jesus Christ, the person who did the right thing is was one. not even a priest mm. or the mm. Levites who are from the worship family. Mm. Uh -huh. And these are the people that were despised. The, the Jews always mm. uh, 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 themselves, yeah, mm. we are very, very pure, mm. descendant of Abraham. Mm. And the Samaritans, they look down them. Mm. Uh -huh. Nobody counts them to be worthy. But this is the same person who turned out to do the right thing. Yeah. And uh, when eventually Jesus Christ gave that analysis and they asked the man, who among these people you think is, you think is his name? <laughs> and he was so much achieved. He couldn't even say the Samaritan. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the one who helped the, you. The one who helped you. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. And then, like you said now, rationalization. A priest might have a sermon to preach. A Levite might have a sacrifice or something. And you're on an assignment. And then when the Lord lays in your heart, like our uh, bishop, my Lord, he just said it. That, that wasn't the first time you saw that woman. Yes. But when the Lord lays in your heart to go forth to do something, you don't have any basis to begin to rationalize. Exactly. Total obedience will push sacrificial livelihood. And so we thank you so much. Daddy, we'll go to question two. Okay. And then it says, how effective are Christians in helping each other in our generation? That is, if at all they are doing so. The question is, are we effective in doing that if we are doing at all? Okay. So there are, there are like two questions. Are we doing it? Uh, I, I, can, can we say, are we really helping? Yes, I actually believe we are doing it because okay. as a Christian, biblically, we are under obligation to do one or two things. One, we are supposed to uh, be each other's uh, brother. brother, to serve one another. That's one. Two, we are expected to encourage one another. Mm. Three, we are expected to bear each other's uh, body. Okay. We are expected to uh, pray for one another. Mm -hmm. This we are doing all the time. It may, we may think it's not effective, but then we just need to keep on doing it because those are the basics. So are there room for improvement? Uh, for sure. Uh, in as much as we are alive, we have to keep <laughs> on doing it. Uh, it may look as if it is not if effective, but it is. Okay. And we are not yet there. Who is the judge? Who is the ultimate judge? Daddy, who, who, huh? who, who will be the judge of how <laughs> effective we are doing? Will it be the Christians, ourselves, or God himself? Well, um, asking that question, I know God is the ultimate, ultimate judge. judge. Yes. But at least we can still see. Yes, we can still see from yes. the example of what um, happens around us. Uh, uh, yes, I want to agree with um, uh, Canon that... Uh, the church is doing involved. it, involved, doing some things. but um, it's not as effective as God will want it to be when we use the standard of God. Because if I am helping somebody because I know that when I help that person, 
he will give me this or give me that is now conditional. Mm -hmm. What the church does today is conditional help. And obligatory help. Yes. Too. Where you see, like you said, the injunction is there. You are expected to pray for one another. You are expected to do this. But the issues of the Samaritan and the wounded. No, uh, there was no condition there. Was no, there. No, no condition. No, nothing he could have passed attached. And, even okay. as a Samaritan, if yes. he had passed, nobody would have even judged him. Yes. It's the priest or the Levi that would have been judged. But this Samaritan could have easily passed. So, yes. So this sacrificial giving means, like you're saying now, uh, it's not only when it is there's condition attached. That's what you're trying just, to say. Just bring a bag of rice mm. to the church mm. and ask the priest there, get me some people. You will see the priest, including mm. myself, mm. I, because I'm a priest by the grace of God, mm. looking for somebody who I know <laughs> Very well. <laughs> I, I won't go out there looking for people that actually need it. Need it. I will still look for people that you. Yeah, you I know that. Touch. Yes, I I know that when when I do it, they will they they, they will respect me more. They will <laughs> thank me more. But uh, you know, I will, I won't be I won't be this I won't be this out mm. as the man this Samaritan. Yeah. Okay, let, let, let's bring it, let's exemplify the effectiveness with the story of Lazarus and the rich man in uh, Luke chapter, uh, you wanted to say something there? Uh, no, 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 we are okay. still on it. Okay, yes, Luke uh, chapter 16, verses yes. 20 and 21. Do I'll quickly read it. Read it. Okay. I'll quickly read it so okay. that. Read it. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs mm. which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked mm. his sores. So we are looking at a situation where the rich man already had. Lazarus was desiring. It wasn't very clear whether he was getting. But he was desiring to get from the crumbs that fell from, from the man's table. Uh, you, you can see from that example, when the rich man died, he went to hell. When the poor man died, he went to heaven. The poor, the rich man did not go to hell because of his wealth. Good. But he lived a self-centered life. Mm -hmm. He was not of help to anybody. This poor man was at his gate. He passed through the gate to go in and to go out. He saw the condition of the man. He never lift, lifted up his finger to be of help. This thing is common with us, even in Nigeria today. You, you see... A situation when we finish eating the remaining food, we put it in the freezer. The great man there mm. is hungry. Mm. Even you see the children, their children, they will put on singlet mm. that is torn over. Wow. In our house, my mom packed all the clothes the children are not using, lock them up. Oh, we are going for missions. We are going for an outreach. Uh -huh. It is the clothes we have used that, we that bring most out. of us give the shoes we have used, and some of them. We are asked if I'm Robert, you come <laughs> <laughs> to the house. You won't say, okay, take this, leave yes, this. Uh, yes, yes, you won't have option. You will say, carry, 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 sir. Just spare my life. God forbid in Jesus. So, so, so this were to draw example by, because at the end of the day, it is not what we have in our bank account mm. that we count, but those whom we, are, we have if used we our call, resources yeah, 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 to, to assist, assist yes. as the steward of God. Mm. That, that is, is what will happen. Yes. Yes. That is, I know you want to corroborate something. Yes, I, I, will, I agree with uh, my brother, Canon. Uh, the issue of what took the rich man into hell is not the is wealth. Not the wealth. <laughs> But his attitude. And two is not the poverty. It's not the poverty that no. <laughs> no, it's, but it's his contentment. It's his contentment. Uh -huh. The Bible says godliness with contentment yeah. is great gain. Okay. I mean, it, though he wasn't happy being a poor man and yeah. dying a poor man, mm -hmm. but he was contented. He would not steal. He, never, he will he not never tell lies. From the crumbs yes, just oh, give me something to I'm okay with that. So thank you. Uh -huh. So the the rich man should have at least had pity. We on the that, poor man. God that God has done for him. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you such so much. I am being richly blessed. And I know you out there, you're receiving direct from the throne of grace. The level you are, comportment and contentment with what you have and giving praise to God, being joyful, 
and not being envious of the ones that I have around you, then if you have a brother and you're not effective in sharing from what you have, selling two of your jackets, uh, selling one and giving to the poor, if you're only giving from the crumbs that you have and allowing your dogs to lick the wounds of the poor around you, you're being warned here. We'll go for a short break now, and when we come back, we'll go to question three. Thank you for being there. I know you're not going away. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN's Now Streaming discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Welcome back. We are going straight to question three. Thank you for being there. And I know your friends are with you. The Lord bless you as you continue to join us. Amen. Uh, Daddy, question three is saying, how can our congregational members or parish be of help to those in need among them? This is a very wonderful question to a wonderful man. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How, how can the con our congregational members... Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think um, trying to emphasize on those who really need this help or parish. Or parish. That means either yes. on individual basis yes. or on corporate basis. Yes, no. be okay. of help to those in need mm. among them. Uh, I'd like to read from Deuteronomy okay. chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 15, okay. verse 7 to 11 and it says if anyone is poor among your fellow israelites in any of the towns of the land the lord your god is giving you do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them rather be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need be careful not to harbor this wicked tough. Mm. The seventh year, the year for counseling debts is near mm. so that you do not show ill will toward the needy among your fellow Israelites and give them nothing. They may then appeal to the Lord against you and you will be found guilty of sin. Give generously to them and do so without grudging, without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to do. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So maybe I will, I will just help and read Acts chapter 4 from verse 32 to 37, if you don't mind. Sir. Please. Okay. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but it had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas, by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Now, this passage encourages us as um, members of a parish or congregation to help those among us who are in need. First of all, the Bible made it very, very clear from the passage we have read that we should not neglect the poor 
among us. And they will always be they there. They will always be, be there. there. <laughs> it is a privilege. Whatever God has blessed us with, finance, resources, talent, whatever it is, it is a privilege. And we are stewards and we will give account. The church, as we can see, is more interested today in building mm. structure than the welfare of their members. There is nothing in, wrong in building structure, but right. when we emphasize or mm. give emphasize so it. much priority to building structure and in our congregation, we see people who cannot pay their school fees. We see people who cannot eat. We see people who do not have a place to lay their head. Then we are turning things around and it will be a sin. Yes, it means that the church has committed a sin against God. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 10 and uh, 9 where we read 9b and it says that it may be the lord you you will now be found guilty of sin if you refuse to help the your needy, brother your brother the church the household of members the yes it is very very important <clears throat> and then again it is a command mm -hmm. Therefore, I command you. Look at verse 11. It's a command, which means that if we don't do it, we are disobeying God. And you can't be living in disobedience and still asking God for, for blessing. It's impossible. It's not possible that the church will be, uh, will be praying, the church will be jumping up and down, the church will be preaching, and yet we are disobeying that command. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites, towards the brethren, towards your fellow members. I mean, we are all in the church. We've mm -hmm. seen situations where every day there is this person who comes into church with the same dress, with sometimes barefooted, with slippers, and you see some of us who come in with, you know, different dress every Sunday, and yet... When we are going out, we put our eyes as if we didn't see this person. My Lord, you know what is hitting me very strong. Now I understand the passion with which the primate of the Church of Nigeria... Exactly. I, I talked about this uh, introduction of chapter 16 in the Constitution of the Church of Nigeria, wholly dedicated to the welfare of our members. Wholly dedicated... It, it was with passion. I was at the standing so, committee. So yes. let, maybe I say something about what we are doing differently in Abuja mm. houses. Um, because of this command, the primate, his grace, has directed that a welfare committee be set up in each parish. So we now have welfare committee. And usually those people that are put in the welfare committee are people with means who can use their own money in addition to whatever the, the, the church. Then we take offering, like in um, uh, our church now, St. Matthew's. You, in the past, we, we take every uh, maybe every other Sunday. But now, the vicar has insisted that we should be gathering whatever, that we take it once in a month, so that it will come in bulk. So it's always being announced. Don't forget, well-being, welfare, we'll be making collection for them this so, so so coming Sunday. So come prepared. Then we now have food bank. Mm -hmm. I was going to we have food bank. Ask about that. So the the, the 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 food bank now anybody can bring in food there. And every Saturday we normally gather first Saturday of the month. We normally gather all the people that are in it have a little uh, like 10 minutes talk with them then distribute whatever is available including money and food to them so then uh, beside feeding the welfare committee takes it upon itself to make sure that we don't just give the people fish but uh -huh. teach, teach them, them how to fish so if you learn any trade you have a skill you want to be set up 
they look into it and help you to set up a business so that you can be off from the begging. Yeah, uh, I, I testify. So that is I, what we do now, I think. I testify in, uh, of um, uh, hearing and knowing and being part of these issues of uh, all, it's about three sections. Now we're talking about individual contributions and corporate, that is parish and things like that. And then the issue of uh, giving, uh, teaching how to fish. Uh, because I know of churches now that have scholarships. You know, we send people to Akinola Foundation, yeah. where they go to learn trade. Yes. Uh -huh. So I, I know Abuja Diocese is doing that. I know that many other dioceses are doing that. And I, I like that aspect of teaching people how to fish and not only giving them fish. But so you now need to categorize it. You have the short term, the medium term, term, the long, long term. term. So somebody you're teaching how to fish, in the short term, you're able to be able to fish, stand on its own give and even come and, and be like contributing that. to for those who don't have so the I less want, privilege. I want to see a situation too where the church begins to teach by example and by words. When we're talking of if you have a shop, you're able to give credit to members. You need to give food, food is, you have it, you have the means. You're talking of people who have the resources, you're giving and then where the trauma is saying the seventh year is the jubilee yeah, year yeah, yeah. Yeah. where you cancel that. So if it's the sixth year, a lot of uh, Christians will not be careful. This person will not be able to pay. So you shy away when you see the person coming, you avoid and things like that. So all these things are coming to sin. But now we'll get to question four. This issue you hammered on so much, we'll still come back to it. But we're looking at if somebody is a lawyer or you're a policeman or a policewoman, you see your brother coming to the station. We have had stories of people passing the case to another person because you don't want to help. You are a doctor, you have your own clinic, you are not able to give services pro bono. Or even on corporate levels, the church has a university or the church has secondary school or primary school and there is a member of the church who cannot afford to pay the school fees. I think from what we are saying now, it is a sin for a member of the church not to be able to attend the school owned by the church. I'm not talking of people who come as, by shortcuts to become a member of the church because they want to attend the school. But if the church owns any university, owns any secondary school, and we have members in that church who still pay offerings and tithes like that, and that person in the church, because he's the needy, the child is not able to go to that school. I think we are now coming to say that, ah, from what my Lord read out there, that the, uh, God might be asking us questions. If we have established school and members cannot go to that school because of a high fees, I, I think... I believe that the head of the church is hearing me. All the archbishops and all the bishops are hearing today. So I think One we begin to look at it very well. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, our bishop is here. Yes. So, so in the house of bishops, and let us begin to look at it. What do we need to do? Do we say, okay, look, oh, any member of the church who genuinely is a member, active in service arms and all that, none of the children should not... Uh, attend the, the, the schools on the on grounds of not being able to pay this. That, my Lord, please, I think it's a cause we should take up. Yes. We have people say it, but please, can yes. we take it up as a serious matter? Yes, I, I that, that by the grace of God, I, I'm, I'm really grateful, not just um, our primate, mm. Heron Dukoba, mm. but even uh, Archbishop, the retired primate. In fact, all the primates we have had, mm have always emphasized on the welfare of the, the members. Yes. And I thank God that uh, um, our present primate um, is really working on that. God but bless that. The, the, it, it goes down, down, down to the parishes. The parishes yes. it, it shouldn't just hang yeah. up there. It goes down to the parishes where the pastor should open his eyes and identify. Yeah. Not after service, he passes from the vestry mm. into his vicarage. But because, my Lord, uh, but my Lord, you know that when instructions are given from top, at least in our church setting, when you tell all your pastors to look into this, and the reports are seen, maybe at the synod, we see how many people have been able to move from this poverty line to that. I think uh, we'll make great efforts if we move that way, sir. If we have a vertical command. You know, in terms of uh, the order in the Anglican, Anglican Church, when the bishop says, please, I want this done. When the passion, like I've talked of this passion I saw in the primate, in saying that a chapter of the constitution and in every diocese must be dedicated to welfare. Committees should be set up. Policies should be put in place. Welfare policies. I think we are, we are headed the right direction. Yes. So I pray that God will bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we'll go to question four quickly.
uh, you already hit it, but we might, well, let's just touch it. So what is the consequence of neglecting the poor and needy? Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 mm. to 46. Okay, I read. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you caused, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then he also we answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of this, of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into everlasting punishment. For the righteous into eternal life. This God is the mercy. word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May God have mercy. Amen. Amen. So, sir, how can we summarize? We, we've seen it. <laughs> what is the consequence? The consequence is uh, <laughs> <laughs> everlasting damnation. It's a serious matter, my Lord. It's a very, when you read it out there, the thing hits me so hard. That it is sin. Yes, Because it it's is. a command. No. You want to say your last words on, on this? You want to throw in the last word on this? Yes. What I want to say here is that we should not be negligent mm. and we should not pretend. Mm. The poor we always have in our midst. Mm. We should open our eyes. Mm. We should not pretend we didn't see them or we're not seeing them. They're there. So no excuse. No excuse. We should identify them. We should be able to identify them. Mm. We cannot say uh, we don't know them. We should be able to identify them and do something about their situation. This, um, the, the man who was beaten never appealed to mm. anybody. He never, there yeah. was nobody he appealed to. Yes. He didn't write appeal letter. Yes. Yes. He wasn't in the hospital and asking. It was somebody who saw him. So we shouldn't wait until we, shouldn't the... wait until we see appeal letter. You, or we shouldn't wait until somebody uh, 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 asks us. We should be able to identify why we... Um, mm. um, give um, attention to those who appeal. We should also give attention to those who do not appeal. Let's not say, uh, but you didn't ask me. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, it's a very, uh, you, you see, this, this account of the end time judgment emphasizes how Jesus Christ Jesus. wants we, his followers and disciples, mm. to care for the less privileged. And the best way to serve God, to serve Jesus Christ, is to serve those around us. around us that we look down upon. So, those that are not in position to return our our kindness or whatever we do to them. You see during Christmas, Christmas is coming on. You see people carrying bags of rice to go and give to somebody who, already who, have. who yes, <laughs> neglecting those who have not. Thank you, Thank you sir. Those who cannot repay them. Thank you, so, sir. So, so we must take example. We must learn from our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to serve him, these are the people, those whom we look down upon, those that are actually in need of help, to be the people we concentrate upon. Yes. And you see, even from that account, those that were doing the right thing and those that did not do the right thing, they were not even aware when they encountered Jesus Christ. Yes. So, so, so doing the right thing, so doing the right thing, we may... We, we may we may seemingly be oblivious yes. of what we are doing. Should but God is taking account, account yeah. is recording everything of everything we are doing. Yes. Because the Bible says, How can you claim you love God whom you are not seeing? Yes. Not God 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 God. See, thank you so much. Uh, it's a very uh, sensitive and very important topic. Me, I am touched, I am blessed. <laughs> and why not when I have my fathers in God here? Daddy, thank you so much. Thank God you. bless you. So let's take the conclusion. The poor and needy will forever live among us. Our faithfulness in helping such as our ability can carry will always grant us favor from God and finally reign with him. The food for thought is God will not come down to help. He uses yes, people yes. like yes. you. <laughs> the memory verse is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 11 and it says, For, for the, the poor will, will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, 
you shall open your hand wide to your brethren, to your poor and your needy in your land. Ah, Father, thank you so much. Let's look at this. This memory verse is wonderful. And I don't know why it's hitting me so hard. My Lord and my daddy, please, can we take this memory verse again? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11. Let's read it with emphasis. Okay. And it says, For, for the poor will, will never cease from, from the land. land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you, you shall, shall open your, your hand wide to your, your brethren, brethren, to your poor, and, and to your, your needy in, in your land. land. May the Lord grant us this grace to obey Him. Amen. Amen. Knowing that any command He gives us, if we fail to obey, is disobedience. And we have heard today that there's eternal damnation for disobeying the Lord. Our Lord Bishop here has reminded us, it is not for us to wait for people who appeal. We should search for the needs around us. We should open our eyes and see those needy around us. People who are not able to pay their school fees, people who are sick, people who are not able to eat, people who are not accommodated, people who do not have jobs, people who do not have skills. It is our responsibility to search out for them. May the Lord release the grace upon us to do that. Mm -hmm. And may we obey the Lord because this command has been given to us today. Today is a new day. Mm -hmm. We'll start from here. And the testimonies shall ring out. Our church shall be a welfare-driven church. People who want to make heaven by obeying God. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for being there. And thank you for listening. And thank you for agreeing to obey the Lord. But we'll first thank our fathers in God. Daddy, thank you for coming. The Lord has used you to bless us mightily. Thank you, May the Lord continue to increase the anointing in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. My Lord Bishop. I, I, I don't, I'm afraid to pray for you. <laughs> no, no, I need that prayer. I need that prayer. But honestly, God has used you to open my eyes to a place I've been reading before, more than before. Thank you for coming. Thank and I know my much. viewers today have, you know, will testify that you've been a blessing in the house. Thank, Thank you. you, Daddy. Your Thank ministry you. will never go down. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. And your Amen. health and ministry will keep on going. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. And viewers, I know you will be here same time Next time on this edition of Bible study, the Lord will always bless you. But as he blesses you to minister unto you, please remain obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.